Hey everybody, welcome to the Daily Space Weather. If you're wondering what's going on in space, this video is for you. We've got a new sunspot recently formed up here. It's sunspot 2831. It spontaneously emerged north of sunspot 2827. And here's the closest star in a different wavelength. That's 171 angstroms from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Here's 304 angstroms. A different portion of the ultraviolet light spectrum. More on the ultraviolet light spectrum when we do the cosmology segment. By the way, I'm your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash mash Congratulations on finding out that the channel exists. And here's one more view, 193 angstroms. It shows us some coronal holes here. This one associated with the South Pole. And this one associated with the North Pole. We're expecting brief periods of geomagnetic unrest from the proton stream from this South Pole-oriented coronal hole midday tomorrow, universal time. Here's a chart of the solar system. We're approaching a new moon. There's where things will be in one week. Here's a star chart. And we've drawn in the ecliptic. It's this yellow line. This is Jupiter and Saturn. Believe it or not. There you go. There's Saturn. There's Jupiter. We've also got the moon near the ecliptic. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux. The radio output of the lower solar corona and upper solar chromosphere. Currently at 77 solar flux units. Here's the one year chart of that. The black line is the radio flux. The red line is the sunspot number. And again, you can see here NOAA is forecasting just about tomorrow when we do tomorrow's daily space weather video, a period of geomagnetic unrest. It should be perfect timing for us to cover, assuming NOAA's forecast for the arrival of that coronal hole windstream is correct. Let's check global seismicity. Earthquakes have been occurring. Let's see where and what. So it looks like there was a 6 plus magnitude here, a 6.0 northeast of New Zealand, and some 5 magnitudes also all around the Pacific Rim. Let's scroll up the list here on USGS. The United States Geologic Survey. And I'm just going to let the list scroll here. Nothing too exciting going on as far as seismicity. This 5.6 magnitude quake in between Fiji and Tonga. 5.6 magnitude quake here at 421 kilometers depth. Also, Ecuador saw a deep quake about 25 minutes after that deep quake at Oceania. Kermadec Islands region also saw a 5.7. That was the largest of the past 24. Perhaps downgraded from a 6.0. Not sure why Volcano Discovery's visualization showed us a 6.0 magnitude. Also saw a deep quake at Indonesia at nearly 180 kilometers depth and a 4.6 magnitude. And while we did the show prep, we saw a 4.5 here in an odd place in northwestern Australia near Nulagin. Nulagin. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it. You tell me in the comments. Next volcanoes over the past 24 we see Karimsky on the Kamchatka Peninsula now exploding back onto the list. It's producing a 27,000-foot ash plume. Subinose Jima in the Ryukyu Islands, 7,000-foot ash plume there. Cinnabung now back on the list, exploding. Flight level 300, it's a 30,000-foot plume of volcanic ash. 
coming from the Sumatran, from the Indonesian Isle of Sumatra. Semeru, producing a 14,000 foot ash plume on East Java. Fuego, flight level 140 as it explodes in Guatemala, producing a 14,000 foot ash plume. Sange, no volcanic ash observed in satellite imagery. Please do not pull vault the caldera. Sabancaya in Peru exploding. Intermittent emissions have produced a 24,000 foot plume of volcanic ash and were unable to detect Nevados de Chilean. Don't take that as an opportunity to pole vault the caldera either. Pole vaulting volcanic caldera, especially active ones, could be a dangerous undertaking, and we advise against it. By the way, if you'd like to pick up some merch themed like this, we've discounted all of the merch at our Redbubble shop. You can find links to it, the Smasho merch shop, at smashomash.com. Discounts throughout the month of June on all of the products automatically calculated. Next, the GOES X-ray flux here, no major solar flares. The likelihood for a C-class solar flare is significant, as we've got three different sunspot groups currently on the Earth-facing portion of the solar disk. And we don't see any prikes, prikes in the GOES stroton flux. We don't see any spikes in the GOES proton flux. GOES magnetometer is looking a little spiky here, as the Earth is in the process of snapping into a North Pole oriented current sheet. This is part of that process, most likely. These sudden spikes, and for you new viewers, the N's and M's stand for noon and midnight local time for the GOES 16 satellite. So here's a view of the heliospheric current sheet. You're looking at polarity. Red is South Pole oriented polarity, green is North Pole. And the, the data is two hours and Two hours old here when we made the uh, when we made the video, and Earth may already be snapping across into this small green portion of a North Pole current sheet. There's a view of that. Certainly, some magnetic perturbations going to be happening here as these boundary crossings happen. We may see two boundary crossings in as little as 24 to 36 hours here. Here's a line of sight view of the same data, essentially. Great three-dimensional view there of the heliospheric current sheet and its potential field, sur its potential field surface source lines, the PFSS lines. Next, the sun's B field shown in blue on the line of sight coronal hole plot. You can see that south pole oriented coronal hole and an additional one rotating in here <clears throat> just over the eastern limb. North pole coronal hole up here has actually receded a little bit here. Anyway, there's the latest image from that. And next we've brought up the detected coronal holes and sunspot groups imagery. And again, up here, you can see sunspot 2831. I believe it is a beta class sunspot already. So we've got at least two beta class sunspot groups here, 2829 and 2830. <clears throat> I think 2831 is beta class as well. We'll let you know by the end of the video. Planetary K index, the KP, the KP index, a measurement of global geomagnetism magnetism currently only at two geomagnetic calm conditions. Let's go to the real-time solar wind as we just saw a shift. We just saw a shift in the BTBZ and the phi angle and an uptick in the solar wind density and speed all at the same time. It looks like a little minor coronal mass ejection sort of a strike as we saw the density and velocity coming up at the same time here. The density reached as high as 34 protons per cubic centimeter. That has subsided a little bit. Current solar wind density. Just under 30 protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind speed still elevated from yesterday's very low levels to 346 kilometers per second. We saw some anomalous magnetic perturbations on Earth 
let's see what's going on in the geospace. It's four hours of geospace magnetosphere movie. This data courtesy University of Michigan geospace model V2.0 based on the space weather modeling framework. If you want to read about that, scroll down to the bottom of the page and click details. It'll tell you the data points. Next, these ground-based magnetic perturbations, and we see some odd ones here. I'm going to let it play through once, and then I'm going to rock it back as we see some oddities here going on regarding changes to the Earth's B field. So geospace delta B here showing some oddities. You can see magnetic pulses stretching across the Atlantic Ocean. And let me just bring this back. So this moment right here, you see this magnetic pulse coming down from the North Pole all the way down to Antarctica there. And by the way, Earth currently has two magnetic North Poles. One is over Canada, someplace up here. One is over Siberia, someplace up here. The South Pole is someplace down here, south of the Australian continent. And there are two weak spots in the Earth's magnetic field. One here, the South Atlantic anomaly, and one down here, a new one. Since the South Atlantic anomaly has split into two, the South African anomaly. So I'm just going to rock this once again. Note the time and date stamps, folks, if you're trying to corroborate this to any other data sets. We've also got pulses coming out of the Central Africa region here. Some changes to the Earth's B field from there. So some, some anomalous changes to the Earth's B field here. Especially around 7.30 universal time. As well as... around 9 o'clock universal time. So some anomalous changes to the Earth's B field reported by the Space Weather Modeling Framework. Next we're going to stream live to Twitch. And we just completed today's cosmology segment. Don't forget to check that out if you haven't. Let's continue on with the daily space weather. Now, electrons out there in space can charge up satellites, and we see a little bit of charging hazards here, mainly over the Central Pacific, Central America, and Mexico. So some minor charging hazards here unexpectedly showing up. Here's the one-year chart of the relativistic electrons that surround planet Earth, the greater than two mega electron volt electron fluence. Here's a three-day chart of the electron flux. And again, quite low levels. We're expecting to see even lower levels tomorrow when the coronal hole wind stream arrives in earnest. Here is the relativistic electron model forecast. The green boxes are the forecast. The yellow diamonds are the observation. Here's a visualization of the total electron content forecast. And we're seeing some anomalous blobs of electron flux once again here. Some GPS error is likely to occur at night as this is showing you the whole air column and the density of electrons there excuse me, the density of electrons therein. You see some anomalies in the southern hemisphere at the end. Nothing too extreme. I'll let it play through a second time. Again, this is the entire air column showing you the density of electrons between your GPS handset and the GPS satellite way up high in a geosynchronous orbit. Here's a diagram of the Van Allen belts. Feel free to pause the video. Distances are shown here in miles. Here's another diagram of the atmosphere. Distance is shown in kilometers. And we're moving into the F ionosphere layer here, located at 300 kilometers of altitude or so. Here's an animation of that. One slice of the atmosphere in vibrational frequency, shown in megahertz, millions of vibrations per second. Ionosphere looking a little anomalous here as well. So some significant anomalies showing up here on the Earth side of things. As we approach the solstice. And 
And let's bring up the latest image here. Latest image coming through from 10 o'clock, 9.15 Universal Time. Looking actually normal at that moment. And let's do a meteorology segment. It'll be separate from the Daily Space Weather video. And welcome back to our Twitch viewers. And we just did a meteorology segment. If you haven't caught that, check it out. It's time to do our bonus features for the Daily Space Weather. So the first bonus feature is going to be the latest imagery from Udaipur, India's ground-based solar observatory. Looks like we may see a little bit of clouds here over Udaipur, India. Not a great data set there. Let's check out the latest intensity grams. Sunspot 2831. We'll likely get a name if it's still there before it sets. Here are the rest of the sunspot groups. Here's a colorized magnetogram. Sunspot 2831 is indeed beta class. Again, there is significant likelihood for C-class solar flares, especially since the Earth-facing quiet is expiring as Sunspot 2829 is moving out of the Earth-facing zone. Next, I'd like to thank our patrons, the true source of funding for the content. If you'd like to help us out greatly, consider becoming a patron. You'll also get all kinds of perks like multimedia, earliest alerts, and more, like science data. Thanks to our patrons, patreon.com slash smashamash. It helps us out a great deal. And last but not least, here is some 94 Angstrom's imagery from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. It's the Southern Hemisphere. A couple of sunspot groups visible there in this ionized ultraviolet emission spectral state of iron. And here's the northern hemisphere. And we'll also show an extreme close-up of that same region in the same wavelength. And 94 Angstrom's actually takes 10 images per minute instead of only two. Great Earth scale there just above the new sunspot 2831. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Remember to stare at the sun, attempt to understand the physics. Don't drink, but if you do, don't drive. And welcome to the neo-Renaissance. And since it'll never be now again, may that solar wind be at your back. <laughs>